Hi, I'm Greg Garcia here at Angler's All in Littleton, Colorado. Today we're going to tie a muddler minnow, which is a great pattern. It can be used as a streamer. Uh, you could sink it down deep, maybe behind another bigger uh, uh, pattern in case you want to fish two streamers in tandem. But then it's also another pattern that you could fish as you would a hopper um, right on the surface or just let it swing and let it sink just a little bit. So have some different techniques of uh, spinning some hair, mounting some wings. I think, hope you guys, everybody out there enjoys this. Thank you for watching. Okay, so get started here. <clears throat> we'll have a Tiemco 5263, size 6, in the uh, vise at the moment. You can tie these from a variety of sizes, as big as you want to go, down to, uh, boy, maybe size 12, if you'd like. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I just got some uh, Dansville 6 aught <clears throat> thread. I'm going to start my thread at about the 75% point of the hook. And then I am going to just lay down a little thread base here. Just taking my time getting back to where I'm just right above the barb of the hook. This base doesn't have to be perfect, but let's just go ahead and cover this up nicely. If you want your thread to be a little flatter, just go ahead and counter spin your, your bobbin if you're a... Uh, Right hand tire, and that will flatten out real nicely. If you're a left hand tire, you just go the opposite direction. Okay, so I'm right there. <clears throat> the tail on this consists, and what we're using is some turkey wing quills, and there's a matched pair when you buy these. There's a right and a left. And I've taken a slip out of each side, uh, one for on the right wing and one on the left. And what we're going to do here, and I've already prepped a few of these, but I just want to go ahead and show you. You can either go in with your scissors or a bodkin, determine the size that you want, split that open like so, and then uh, just kind of switch hands there and cut that off. And... We would do the same for the other side, and then that those way, those two will come together. Here I have one that I've uh, already have done, and uh, we have two pieces there, the right and the left. I've just married those together, or just laid them side by side. <clears throat> the length of the tail, about half the length of the body. So I'm using my fingernail to kind of determine that length as I roll my fingers back of course you can see how that goes longer or I can shorten it up right about there is where I want it so I'm just going to go fingernail to fingernail make that transfer into my left hand and then I'm going to make two wraps and then very softly what I'm doing here is I'm letting the weight of a bobbin just to kind of crease that feather and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten up. At this point I can let go of the tail, see how that looks. Right on top of the hook is uh, what we want to go for and uh, successful there. So now <clears throat> I'm going to run my thread forward, keeping these slips on top of the hook the best you can. If they twist a little bit, that's okay. But uh, we want a smooth body here, so if I keep it on top, we'll accomplish that. So I get up to that 75% point, percent point, just shy of it. I'm going to go ahead and reach in here and cut that off. 
and then now you can see that's all consistent nice smooth body now the body is going to be uh, some mylar tinsel <clears throat> it's gold on one side silver on the other and we're going to want the gold to be uh, showing so what I'm going to do is slide this under the thread and on my side I'm looking at the silver and then I'm just going to roll this right over to the bottom even this up so nothing's sticking in front of that 75 percent point of my tie-in make about four tight wraps and then when I pull this mylar over to start wrapping we should have the gold that we're going to see okay Now I'm just going to start working my way backwards and I am just barely overlapping the previous wrap. I find that if you go a little slow with this and just kind of make sure that's all seated in, we're not going to have any gaps. And then also, probably more importantly, that we're not going to have any little aneurysms uh, where this mylar starts to buckle like it started to do right there so I'm going to come right back redo that I could certainly do this with uh, some flat mini braid which would be a lot faster a little quicker but this is the way the original pattern was tied, so we're just going to kind of stick this way. Plus, if you buy any of these uh, out there on the market, they're all going to have this type of body. So I figured uh, let's do it the way it was a tied. Once I get back to the tail, then I can work myself my way back forward again try not to uh, leave any big gaps it's almost like you can feel this mylar kind of seat itself Got another little gap there just to look the best we can possibly do. So. <clears throat> we start to hurry and kind of want to try to rush it. It's going to get out of place. Okay. That accomplished. It's probably the hardest part of this whole fly, in my opinion. Just getting that on there nice and smooth. Okay. Once we've accomplished that, we're going to put a little underwing of calf tail. And this has been dyed tan. I usually just go right down to the bone, cut that out. Start off with a pretty good chunk. Hold on to the tips. Pull out any of the little small pieces that are in there. And then I do like to stack this. Just to make sure. Have any little stragglers you don't like, you can pull those out. All right, this is going to be a little underwing. It's not going to come out past the tail, just a little shy of the end. And then do a little pinch wrap, get it in place. That looks good. And 
in. Make sure you get that tight in nice and tight because that stuff is pretty slick and it'll pull out easily. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to mount the wing. So again, just like the tail, I have a right and a left. Even those tips up. And you want to have these slips the same width as well. Okay. Wing's going to come right almost past, uh, just shy of the tail in length. You can tie them shorter if you'd like to, but again, I like to uh, have them right about there. Um, another two little soft wraps, let my bobbin hang, and then I can tighten up. Take a look here, make sure everything's on top, lined up, and I can snip this uh, front of this slip out. Just going to clean this up just a pinch. Make sure we're nice and tight. And then, since we're going to spin some hair, I'm going to change threads. I got some Vivas 50 denier gel spun. I'm just going to uh, get this started on the hook over my black thread, get that tied in. Cut that off. Gel spun thread when we're spinning some hair, I think uh, one, it's super strong and we can really spin this hair nice and tight. Okay. Spinning deer. This is a natural white tail. And I'm just going to go in and cut a clump out. It's a pretty sizable piece. What you want to do is hold this clump by the tips. Get your comb, get out any under fur that is in there. Because if you don't get it out, it'll hold this material from spinning. And then I want to stack this. Put the tips down in the stacker. I pull this out, you'll see that the tips are all nice and even. I'm going to do a couple more steps here. One, first I'm going to cut this back piece out. Just kind of even everything up. Then I'm going to give it another comb. Get a little bit more under fur out of there. Then let's stack this one more time. So the tips of this bunch is going to become our collar on this fly. And the collar is going to be about half the length of the body. And <clears throat> what you want to do is this is going to be the shorter section, about right where my fingernail is, is where that's going to be tied in. And then back here, so I'm going to switch hands. I want this to be a little longer on the back side. I'm going to cut a little bit of this out. This will come in handy when we go to trim this up. Spin your bobbin, tighten that thread up. 
and uh, we're going to make two soft wraps and then on the third wrap I'm going to tighten up and that all spins around the hook and then work your way to the front of that bundle so I'm basically on bare hook at this point and then we're going to get this hair come to the front and I'm going to push backwards and pack this in as tight as possible. They do make little packers that you can purchase that helps accomplish this. But I think uh, you can get in there with your fingernail and really tighten that up nicely. Okay, so that's the first part. Get over here to some bare hook. And we're going to do this again. Probably going to do this two more times. So grab the tips, get the under fur out. Stack. I'm going to reverse my stacker so my tips are up on the front side this time because what we're going to do is cut those tips out so that this body is all, the front head is all the same. Okay, we're going to do, let me tighten this thread up. Kind of been hanging there for a minute. Okay. Two wraps. Third wrap. Tighten. Spin. Move your weight self forward. And then pack everything in there. Get up to some bare hook here. Take another cut. Not quite as big as what I've did on those first two. Don't have that much hook to uh, actually cover. We'll stack this, do this one more time. All right. Let's get that out of the way. I don't think we're going to need that anymore. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to cut these tips out. Just a pinch too much, so I'll just take a little bit of that out. Spin my bobbin again, tighten up that thread. One, two, third time, tighten it up, spin. If you've never spun deer hair, that is a lot of fun. It has a fun feel in the hand, and watch that spin is addicting. Okay. Now all I want to do is get most of this hair out of the way so I can finish this off. There we go. And I can whip finish.
then we can start trimming this, shaping this head up. Make sure that's nice and tight. This gel spun thread is really tough. Scissors aren't super sharp. It's going to be a little hard to cut that. Okay, now comes the fun part. So what I want to do here is first separate the last two bundles I spun from the collar. Because we don't want to trim those tips of the collar out. And what I like to do is just kind of with my scissors go in there and I can kind of separate those. And I'm just going to start making a few cuts. Go all the way around. Leave yourself lots of material to work with. It's easy to get a little, go through this quickly and fly that we've taken some time to tie, all of a sudden we've ruined it because we went way too fast. Come in here. Again, I'm just starting to make a shape. Basically what we're going to do is make a little cone head to this. I found the easiest way to do the rest of this is we're going to get a double edged razor blade just like uh, grandpa used to uh, probably shave with. And just lay this on your table and fold it onto itself and this will snap into two pieces. So much sharper than any scissor that's out there. And what you're going to do is just curve this to the shape you want and then we're going to come in here at the eye of the hook I'm going to start trimming this up. I'm thinking in the round. So if I make a little cut on one side, I'm going to go make that same cut. And just make my way all the way around. There's no hurry in this process, so... Okay, I'm getting that basic shape that I want. Be careful I don't go too deep into this collar and cut off my little, that first wrap. I'm going to go back to the scissors at this point. And then basically, just with your tips, separate the collar from the other two spun sections.
And we're really close to being finished here. I'm gonna go back with my razor blade. Now for to fish, right now you could probably just take this out right as it is right now. Fish it. Let's just take a little bit more off though. It's real easy to go too far. Like I said. Make sure the eye is clear. There you go. I think uh, that would uh, fish pretty nicely right there. Again, fish this up in the surface or nymph it or fish it like you would a streamer. Maybe even fish it behind another streamer. And uh, it's a muddler minnow, been around since about 1920. Give it a go. Thanks for watching.